Hi and welcome to another video by me, Joe Onwin, also known as FlowJo. Today we are looking at Power Automate Desktop and how we can create a shortcut to a folder anywhere on our system. Now, sounds really easy, right? You just right click, send to, create a shortcut. But how do you do this in Power Automate Desktop? Well, what I'm going to do today then is I'm going to walk you through the process that I use. It's very simple, it's really easy to reuse and you can actually do it based on hard coding it, or you can actually get the user logged in so that you can generate shortcuts for whatever user is running the flow. So I'm gonna go through each of these steps and then we'll get to something like this. We've got an example shortcut here on our desktop and we'll just double click on that and it will take us to our example folder with our example files into it. So that's a very good point. Why would you want to do this? Well, let's say you're running a bot and it's generating a lot of folders, it's generating a lot of files, and it's doing it based on a particular location. Be it, uh, it could be on OneDrive, it could be uh, anywhere on the system, anything like that. You're going to potentially want to create a shortcut on the desktop so the user can easily get them. They don't have to navigate. Or alternatively, you may just have a requirement to create a shortcut to a folder. Well this is going to be how you do it. So how I do it is I go to use PowerShell because I find that to be the easiest way. So let's take a look at how we actually get to this particular point then. What I'm gonna do first is I'm going to delete that shortcut. So you can see here, we do not have a shortcut now and we're gonna go through the process and generate it. So if I go back to Power Automate Desktop, I've got two actions here. I've got one that's get Windows environment variable user profile and then I've got another one that is just running a PowerShell script. So if I run this get Windows environment variable what that's going to do is it's going to get the current user logged in. So that will be C drive users and the user I'm logged in that I use for all of my RPA videos is work. So I go C drive users work. So I have the current user logged in. So then you can go to like desktop documents or whatever. Now you may not need this step if you're saving just directly to C drive or something like that, but you need to decide how you're going to do it. But this makes it dynamic. You're dynamically getting the user profile logged into Windows. Then what we're doing is we're running a PowerShell script. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to run this script to see if it works. Hopefully it does. So we've just run this and as you can see, it was lightning fast and we now have an example shortcut. And if I open up this, it takes me to my example folder. Great, so we know this works. So how does the actual PowerShell script work then? Well, if we open up the run PowerShell script and that's the action that you'll be using, we've got some code here. Now I'm gonna put this code in the description. I'll also put it on my site. So if you ever need to get access to it, you can just copy it from there. So don't worry about noting it down or pausing the video. Um, what this does is it has four key steps. So the first step is we need to access something in PowerShell called the window shell. And now what the window shell does is it gives us access to operations. So we create a window shell object. So what we do is we just create a variable called uh, W shell, basically window shell. So we're creating an object, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to store that object of the wind shell script shell into that. So what does that do then? That allows us to essentially access particular things. Now, if you're used to like power effects where you do um, you will have your variable and then you do dot length, for example, or something like that. Well, this is what it does. It allows you to have access to those particular functions. So the window shell here, we can do WS shell dot, and then we'll have access to particular functions then. So the next step, after we've created our object here, is we're going to then generate the shortcut. Now, the shortcut is just going to be stored again in a shortcut variable. And what you do is you do a dollar sign shortcut equals, and then we're referencing the previous um, variable that we created. So we're doing W shell 
uh, dot create shortcut. So we're accessing that function. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass a parameter through. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to pass the environment user profile. So we don't actually have to get this action at the top here because PowerShell can do it for you. You can just do dollar sign environment. So we're accessing the environment. We're accessing then the user profile. And then we can then say where we want to put it. So we're going to desktop and then we're creating the example shortcut. And then what you do is you do your LNK. So it's a link, an example shortcut link, right? So what we've done at the beginning where I showed you this particular environment variable, all I did was I called that to show you what I was doing to actually get that particular location. But PowerShell can do it directly inside. So you don't actually have to have another action. So we can actually delete this action. Now this PowerShell script is going to do it for us. It's going to get exactly the same thing, the user profile, because it's just a Windows environment variable. Um, and then it's going to get the location. So C drive, users, work. Then we're going to go into desktop. Then we're going to set the location of our shortcut by the name of it. So example shortcut dot LNK. So then we've got the dot link. Great. So we've created the shortcut. The problem we have now is we haven't actually set a location for where we want the shortcut to point to. So then what we can do is we can then do the shortcut variable that we've just created. So do shortcut dot and then you use target path. Now target path is setting the path that you want the shortcut to target. Uh, it's fairly simple. Now all I've done here is I've hard coded this to show you the difference here between using a environment variable or hard coding it. Now you're going to want to always use the environment um, user profile. You're always want, going to want to do that if you're especially going to be running this on multiple machines. You don't really want to hard code anything, um, but if you choose to do so, you can do just like this. So all I'm doing is I'm passing the target path, which is C drive users work example folder. And then all we have to do is then target the shortcut um, variable again and do dot save and then open the parentheses, close the parentheses. Now, when this runs, it's going to create the uh, window shell object. We're going to then create another um, variable called shortcut. We're going to use the window shell object to create the shortcut with the particular link. We're using an environment uh, variable to get the actual full link dynamically. We're then going to add a target path and then we're going to save it. So let's open up this again. There's no folder here. And then let's run through now. So it's run. Nothing don't see anything, you don't see any flow variables, it's just run a PowerShell script, right? Okay, so we've got our example shortcut, great. Does it go to the correct location? It does. So if I click on here, you can see C drive, users, work. This is what you can get from the environment user profile variable. And then we've got the example folder that we're targeting here. So that is how easy it is to create shortcuts in Power Ultimate Desktop simply using a PowerShell script. Now I'm going to put all of that in the description below. If you've liked this video or if it's helped you out or anything like that, hit that thumbs up, leave a comment if you have any questions and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And thank you for watching to the end if you've made it this far.